Wesley, tell me, how do you feel as you're about to go out in another marathon? I feel quite excited about it. And I wish I hadn't left it so long since the last one. I've had quite a gap since the last one this time. You're about to run marathon number 131. I mean, why do you do it? I like the excitement, uh, I like the atmosphere of meeting all the people travelling to the different places and it makes it much easier to run if it's a race than a, a tra in training. Training it's quite difficult to run hard but in a race when everyone's cheering you on it's, it's much, much easier. How does the Glasgow Marathon maybe rate against other marathons you've run in? Well it's one of my favourites because it's my hometown marathon and I really like it from that point of view and you run around all the, the streets that you knew really well and I have lots of support here which is great, that really gives me quite a lift. You really must be super fit. No, not really. I wish I was. <laughs> okay, Bob, here we are. It's a big race day. How are you feeling? Everything falling into shape? Of course I've got to be with all 3,500 people almost ready on site. Yes, everything is going absolutely very, very well. Why do you do it, Bob? I wish someone else would give me that answer. Uh, it's part of my remit through the City Council that this is only one of many events which we organise. Uh, an enormous undertaking, but I get a great deal of pr pride and pleasure, I'm sure. Gus, tell me, you've got a pram and a teddy, yeah. you're accompanied on this one, uh, what, what's it all about? Uh, it's really to, don't tell Bob Douglas, but it's to advertise caught deaths, you know, as opposed to advertising this sort of thing. It's really just, uh, it's a, a charity that's not really known a lot, an awful lot about, and when there's something that size, can't fight. You can't, from where you're standing, see the small Volkswagen engine that's underneath here. <laughs> <laughs> but it has just passed its MOT, <laughs> it cruises like a, a, a Cadillac, and a... As long as the wind keeps down, we should be okay. If I'm in before the first edition of Monday's Daily Record, I'll be quite happy. <laughs> How do you feel, Ronnie? Magic. Feel good. What's the, what's the training been like? Uh, pretty hectic at times, no. I've oh, come on all right, I think. Have you been running for long? Yeah, you know, that's my 75th marathon, I think. <laughs> so I've been, I've been around them, though. Are you worried at all? No, no problems. What sort of time are you looking for? 2.34, somewhere. I feel terrible, we always do, just before the off. You get very nervous and uh, tense and lots of leg kicking goes on and lots of where's the nearest Lou goes on. <laughs> it's a very odd time, even although you know you're not going to break any records, it's still curiously nerve-wracking. But it's good, it's good fun, good to run with the fellas and uh, it's all for a marvellous cause. It's lovely to be here in Glasgow, great city. How will you feel tonight, do you think? Oh, it's all right, once it's over, that's the best part. It's just uh, just before you start in about 16, 17 miles. It's, you, you wonder if you're going to finish then. But it's good, we enjoy it. Bob, I mean, are the first 26 miles the worst? <laughs> There's no good ones. <laughs> None at all. How fit are you? Very unfit. I'm notoriously the unfittest member of this team, <laughs> and I'm setting new records this year. I'm very bad. <laughs> so what sort of time would, would suit you? Anything before nightfall. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere else you'd rather be at 9 o'clock on a Sunday morning? I uh, bed, but the uh, next to that, OK, here. Good morning. Yeah, Bring you're your on. head forward, let them see your hat done. Tell me, first of all, what's your name? Harry McKechen. Harry McKechen? Yeah. Where are you from? I am from Eastwood. What age are you, Harry? I'm 77, and for the last three years I was the oldest runner in the Glasgow Marathon. But I understand that this year there's a fella came from Chesterfield down in Cheshire, and uh, he's 79. But he claims that he'll be able to run the marathon in four and a half hours. Well, I reckon I'll give him a good licking, <laughs> uh, time-wise, anyway, time-wise. You're looking forward to it? Yes. <laughs> How are the old knees going to stand up? Oh, not bad. You see, two years ago, I achieved an ambition of mine. I was, I was a minute under four hours. And if I can get under four hours this year, I'll be... I'll be lovely and happy. I wish you all the best. Thank you very much.
the occasion, the fifth Glasgow Marathon, the world's largest amateur marathon event. No prize money here, simply the most coveted prize for every amateur marathon runner, the medal, which shows that that gruelling 26 miles, 385 yards, was successfully run. This year, exactly 8,210 runners gathered for the start at the Tron Gate. A thousand of the runners were women. There were the serious runners, the charity runners, the weekend runners, and the runners who'd never tackled the distance before. It was a day when sweat and toil over the famous marathon course would pull in an incredible one million pounds for charity. It's not too hard on the limbs here. At Calvin Way, they've come just two and a half miles. Those who didn't go at the start get the chance to go now. Why have you got that outfit on? Any particular reason? Are you having, having a good time? Excellent. And you think you're going to finish? Yes. <laughs> Running for MD in particular. Muscular dystrophy. <laughs> Hope you finish. Thank you. Uh -huh. What's your name? Don't like to stop you in your running though. No, no, it's Are right. you going to finish? Yes. Are I'll you running, running for anybody in particular? Yes, myself. Yourself? No, I wasn't going to do that actually. So. Oh, you just designed today? Yeah. Just about. Aye, that well, day. best of luck. Hope you get on, okay? Hello, monster. <laughs> See you later. Hello, Mary. Bye. 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 Great Western Road can take its toll. At Annie's Land Cross, for some, the pain is often felt. With media attention along the course, few admit to thinking about an early finish. Sure, there's a long way to go, but that feeling of marathon euphoria from the start of the race is still very much with the runners. Don't even ask them about finishing. Do you think you're going to complete it? Of course. Yeah, you, you, I like the tights. You like them, yeah. <laughs> All the best. Cheers. Are you knackered? Um, just about, yes. <laughs> Are you keeping up pace though? I mean, yeah, you're quite yes, happy. quite fine so far. Okay. Don't, don't, don't come down my 50 mile mark, please. How are you feeling? 
right. Are you going to make it? Yes, of course. <laughs> Okay, I mean this is my eighth one that I've danced, but ask me in another 15 miles. What's this all about? Because I'm hoping somebody might see me, that's why, like you for example. <laughs> is it as you'd expected? You know it stitches or anything? No, no, nothing at all. Good. You've trained for this, have you? Yeah, about a year. Sorry? I've trained about a year. You're gonna do it? Yes, yeah, no problem. Good man. <laughs> Fine, fine, thanks. Like, you're gonna do it? Oh, yeah, yeah I'll get there. What about yourself? Shattered. Yeah? Really? <laughs> Could do with a few pints in the bat cave. Oh, we'll get them back. Alright. That's later, that's Stop later. Off. Where have you parked the Batmobile? Uh, somebody stole it last night when we were in the pub. So <laughs> it's a case of having to get Glasgow Transport back home. Good luck anyway. Right, right But Glasgow's own Batman and Robin don't need Glasgow Transport on this occasion. A Glasgow bus, though, would definitely help them find these runners the marathon leaders, the men who are out to win. They're the men who run hundreds of miles a month and who can rightly claim to be among the marathon elite. Batman's wings won't help him catch these fellows. Glasgow's long Clydeside Expressway. Close to cars today, but the true backcloth for any lonely long distance runner. Amongst the leading trio, Englishman Kenny Stewart, a former fell runner from Keswick, tipped to do well. Behind them, Frank Harper from Socky and another Scot, Andrew Beatty. The chasing pack in hot pursuit, but gaps are beginning to appear. Onlookers watch the toil, some celebrate the day early with a spot of bubbly. This is where pre-race training really counts for the bulk of the marathon field. They've come 10 miles now, they're doing well. But for some it's sore. However, the failure rate on this marathon day was small. Of the 8,000 who started back at the Tron Gate, the marathon was to prove too much for only 100 runners. The rest were to go on to collect their marathon medals. On average, the runners will take around 47,000 steps on the way to their medals. They'll lose just two pounds in weight, replacing the water loss at the 15 medical stations scattered over the course. The fast runners will shed four pounds. If this was Sydney, Australia, they'd shed double that amount. The lungs have an active time of it. The average runner will breathe 20,000 times on the way to the finish line. And it's a day of leg pounding. The medical experts say the knee joints suffer most in a marathon. Maybe that's why the organizers this year used 600 cans of pain relief spray.
such is the popularity of Glasgow's premier road race, competitors came from all parts of the globe to take part. Some are behind schedule. The disconsolate looks from the roadside tell all. But still they keep coming. These back markers have run just four miles. Great Western Road proved longer than they'd thought. A sea of paper cups was a hazard they hadn't predicted. For some, it was the arms that were sore. Roadside attractions stayed late to encourage the stragglers. <laughs> Meanwhile, the better than average runners pound on. 11 miles in, and King George V Bridge looms up for the first time. At this pace, these runners could consider crossing the finish line in under three hours. They were doing well. The crowd helps here. Many shout cheers of encouragement at this favourite spectator vantage point. During the day, a quarter of a million Glaswegians were to spend their Sunday lending their support to the marathon and its runners. Seventeen miles in, and Englishman Kenny Stewart had broken from the pack. He was now out on his own. Those chasing were to stay in hot pursuit, though they were never to catch him. Are you getting lots of response from the athletes there? Not yet, no. <laughs> so far, only one. It's too. more for the ones that are in for the, the fun of it, I think, that take the drinks, not the serious ones. <laughs> Young and old alike were to make a day of it. Some were determined to sit it out until the bitter end. As muscles started to ache, the sound of rubber against asphalt became more audible as the legs got heavier. But though help was at hand, the front runners charged on. What have you got there? Yes. Have you given any away yet? Yeah. An army of helpers teamed up at the water stations to ensure a much appreciated supply of refreshment for those in need. What better example of Glasgow people's generosity?
Great dogs. Is this your first, first time? Oh, last year was my first. What was your time last year? Four and a half. What are you looking for this year? Some time today. <laughs> No. We'll get his good stiffening up, so we're just trying to relax him a wee bit and get his glasses a wee bit slacker. You're running for Erskine? Yes, and Liz Mills. And how much are you hoping to raise? About £300, hopefully. What's your name? Gordon Cameron. This is the first time you've run, Gordon? Second time. So any, any worries so far? None at all, none whatsoever. How are your legs? These pieces are terrible. How are you feeling? Feels fine. Hey, not too bad. He ran it yesterday in training. Right, and it's taken too much out of him. What was his time then? <laughs> I'm off. just under the four hours. Are you his manager? Yeah. I'm his son. <laughs> Excuse me, how are you doing? Thanks very much. Not too bad. <laughs> You're going to finish on time, do you think? Well, hope so. How are you feeling now? <laughs> okay, apart from the yeah. knees. <laughs> how are you feeling after 17 miles now? I want to quit. Well, well, no. Stick in? Yeah. Yeah. Stick in yeah. I'm going to finish up. How do you think your training went? Uh, intermittent. Not as, not as good. The training programme never goes as well as it should. So you're feeling pretty stiff at the moment? Pretty stiff in the legs, but this young lady's working a miracle on me. <laughs> I'm about to take it off right now. All right. You Thank you very right, much. Right, Great. Right, Thanks right, a lot. Bye. Deft fingers make quick work of aches and pains. It's amazing how roadside massage can revitalise flagging spirits. Pretty good tonight, so far. Just legs a bit sore. And... So you've got nine, you know, nine miles to go. How are you, how are you feeling for that? I think All right. I've managed, yes. I had done enough training, so I hope so. Are you running for anyone special today? Yes, muscular dystrophy. And how much are you hoping to, to raise? Probably about £70, £80. Pounds. This is your first marathon? Yeah. Are you managing okay so far? Yes. Another nine miles to go then? I'll have no bother, as long as I finish it. I hope you do. Good luck. All right, thank you. Hello there, what's your name? Robert McCleary. How are you managing? Not bad, so far. I hate when the women pushing prams past me though. 
<laughs> You've got another nine miles, you think you'll make it okay, yeah? Oh, no, no bother. We'll Hopefully. see your finishing line. As long as they keep the finishing line open tomorrow. If you're, if you're there, you put money in, okay? Okay, we'll be there if you'll be there, right? We'll right, be there. Yeah. Look forward Cheerio. to it now. Cheerio, Cheerio now. Cheerio, bye now. Right, well, Thank you very much, man. Thanks for coming out. How are you managing? Fine. I like your makeup. Oh, I swear to you. Who are you running for? Erskine Hospital. I'd like to say, tell you one I love her very much. And Mikey and Alan and all the Glasgow mods and everything. And just say, I'm a very talented guy. What do you think of the atmosphere today? Oh, it's brilliant. Glasgow's amazing. Than, I've done the Edinburgh Marathon and it's nothing compared to this. I just like to say thank you. I think you're not too worried about your time today. Oh no, I'm collecting you trying to get as much as I can for Erskine. Best oh, of luck. Oh, I'll have you last in there, mission, huh? And my mother, father, and all everybody knows me. Everyone was soon to know of Kenny Stewart. At his first marathon attempt, the Keswick man was to hit the home straight well ahead of the field in a record-breaking time of two hours, fourteen minutes, and three seconds. It was the fastest Glasgow marathon by a minute. You just run your first ever marathon and you've just won the Glasgow Marathon. I'm very pleased. This is, uh, I suppose, the peak to my year. You know, I built up for this and uh, I'm over the moon, really. Did you plan the race? I, I did in so much as that I knew I would stick into the group until about 15 miles and then see how I felt. And I felt good. And, and you're a fell runner, that's what's, that's was, a secret. I was a fell runner. I'm uh, solely on the roads now. You've got the medal around your neck and it's also the winner's medal. Can you believe it? Yes, I planned for it and uh, I wanted to win it. And uh, I wasn't going to let anybody else win today. That's for sure. Yeah. Well done. Cheers. Four minutes behind the winner, Welshman Dick Evans put on a finishing sprint which brought cheers from the crowds. Dick had given everything, yet could still blow a kiss to his admirers. A helping hand led him away. In third place, Jacek Koneski, half a minute behind Dick, who still had a painful walk to receive his medal. And first got over the line Frank Harper from Socky in a fabulous time of 2 hours, 18 minutes and 44 seconds. A tremendous sense of achievement tinged with disappointment as a place in the first three eluded him. Behind Frank though, thousands of others still pounding it out through Pollock Country Park.
you going to have a wee chat to us? How are you getting on? Shut up, absolutely chicken. You haven't far to go now, though. Yes, I'll go round. I've just had a, a, My legs were awful sore there, but I managed to get a wee rub down and I feel a bit better now. So, so why are you dressed as a clown? So nobody could recognise me. Good costume. Yes. Did you, you make it yourself? Right. Right. Well, that's a good friend of mine. Yacht Crawford made it for us. Some of the boys in the rig are sponsoring me. Oh, for right. the boys' brigade. You're running for the boys' brigade? Yeah. Raising some money? Yeah. Right, how, how are you feeling? A bit tired at the minute, but... So you're going to finish? Oh, I'll we'll get through the park and we'll run the rest. Is this your first marathon? Very first. Uh, the very last? No, no. Oh, I'll do another one. you do another one? Oh, you must be mad. Hello. How are you getting on? Not too bad. Is this your first marathon? No, second. Second? Is it going to be your last? Yeah, I don't know. Depends what I feel like when I finish. Have you been sponsored by anybody? Yeah, uh, yeah. Just Philip Hill. Philip Hill. Final injuries, you know. Well done. Keep going. I'm all right. <laughs> okay. What is wrong with it? My it joint, looks... joint my right leg's gone. Looks, I mean, very, no. looks very severe. Yeah, well, I've, but it was okay to about 16 miles and then my knee went and then I got a bandage and I'm just going to finish no matter what. <laughs> you look remarkably fresh for, what, 21 miles? Fresh? You call that fresh? You look okay. I'm knackered. You, you can shut it and all. How, how are you coping? Uh, well, I think I'll get there. You'll get it's there. It's the gold I'm after. The gold? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, best of luck on what you get. If not, you're bound to get the silver. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have a wee chat with you. Somebody said this was funny. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> is this your first one? No, it's my second one. I've done it last year. And are you better or worse than last year? Uh, slightly better, I think. Slightly better, but you're doing really well. Oh, you, you'll get there. Keep going. But are you enjoying it? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> this is my my third time. I, I'm not sure, but I think I'm the second oldest in the field. How old are you? 69. I'm in my 70th year. You put me to shame. Oh, no. It's all a matter of training. <laughs> Glasgow runner James Doyle was in good shape, which was more than could be said for his pram, which had shed a wheel. Aha! What are you doing behind here? Oh. Oh. That's not the thing to do for marathon runners, is it? Uh, it's all right, darling. One or two fags doesn't kill you. Are you going to get to the end of this race? Definitely. Oh, 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 oh. we'll make Most it. Goose kiss, goose kiss. Goose kiss. <gasps> What's your name? Uh, Brian Blair. And you are? Lenny Clarkson. And are you enjoying it? Fantastic. We'll let you know in another six mile, five, six mile, we'll let you know. If there's there's something it. about this laid back approach that you've got. To me, it's called knackered. Glasgow's Sandra Branny wasn't knackered, far from it. The first woman home, she crossed the line in 2 hours, 37 minutes and 29 seconds. The smile said everything. If not fortune, at least instant fame awaited with a glare of publicity. When she woke up this morning, did she think she'd be the first woman across the line? I knew it was Andy's race. I must admit, knowing who was running, I knew you know, it was just who was performing the day. How do you feel? You don't, you don't look out of puff. I feel, I feel great. I felt <laughs> bad about 23 miles, but I think the last two miles. So now, I tell you, your husband, Donald, uh -huh. is also running and he's still out there, isn't he? Yes, he's still out there. I mean, he doesn't run. He doesn't train the way I train, you know. So. Is this going to be a shock to him to see no, that... No, no, he's, he's quite happy. He just jogs along quite happy. So maybe another couple of hours and he'll come in? No, I think he probably in about three and a half hours, before three and a half. You know, but he's, he's just jogs it. He's quite a happy runner. You know. There's no doubt, who gets, no doubt who gets pride of place in the house tonight, though. I mean, I'll have to make the tea. <laughs> <laughs> Great, yeah. Yeah. 
be a personal best for eight minutes. Right, eight minutes. Only 19. Right. How many marathons are you running? Well, that's only my third year in Glasgow. First Glasgow one. But I'm only 19, so 246 for a 19 year old there. Are you running for any of the athletes? I'm running for the athletes, so I yeah. run for my games. Great, great routes it was, you know. How was the race for you? It was very good. Conditions were very good. Were very good. Yeah. A bit of wind about the 13 mile mark, long pace on the road, but apart from that, it was excellent. From I really your enjoyed point it. Of view, your personal best? Or? Yes, it's a new personal best. I've done uh, nine marathons, that's the fastest I've done yet. Magic. I'll give you the marathon runner's lament if you want. Yes, please. I feel no pain now, mother dear. I'm only feeling dry. Connect me to the brewery and leave me there to die. <laughs> I thought it was quite hard, actually. It was quite windy. Quite a lot of the course, it was really windy. And I'm not really very good at tucking in behind guys or anything like that. I've just been going to chip up in them. I bet they wouldn't it. say that. <laughs> I don't think I like this. Does it help you work, rest and play and run? Oh, yes. You yes. can see that, yes, can you? Yes, definitely. <laughs> From Mary Hill to letter N. Colin Glendenning from Bears Den to letter G. I think all our ladies deserve a gold medal, you know. So do we. We're always busy, always busy. Oh, sure. We do meals and wheels, we do books and wheels, we do Darby and Joan clubs, we do Darby and Joan uh, the entertainment. We did bike, uh, 86. Hospital trolleys, hospital visits. For those faced with a long wait, entertainment for all ages was at hand. Cheerio! <laughs> Cheerio! <laughs> That's it all! Hey, what do you think I should build? Oh, what do you think you should build a house now? Big! Absolutely tough! The long wait for Dad had some fun about it. Younger spectators were quick to improvise their own amusement. I just wondered how your seagull was feeling after the event. Seagull looks a bit flighty, I would say, that's all, yeah. It's, uh, it's okay. Yeah. He's done quite a few marathons, actually. Thank you. On the video. <laughs> a bit of a struggle today. Yes. I've, I've done better. You've done better. And I believe you're running for the Iona team. Yes, I am. I'm a member of the Iona community and I hope to raise a lot of money for it. Could, could, you, feel? could you explain a bit more about what the feels for? It's for a, a new ecumenical youth and family centre on Iona. We hope to start building in April next year. I think it's going to be a tremendous place. So the appeal is going very well at the moment and I hope this will give it another boost today. And if people wish to donate any money to the appeal, how would they, they go about doing Send that? Send it to the Iona community, um, the Abbey Iona, we would get there. Uh, it's like, no, it's Glasgow Hush House Harriers. Hush House Harriers, I uh -huh. see you're so, with them. So it's like a cross-country ah, sort of club. Yeah. We've set up about a year now in Glasgow. Um, it's all, all around the Glasgow area. You have hares and uh, hounds. We follow the hares. Uh, Four-mile runs and usually end up at the pub on the uh, on the on in they call it. So follow a trail of flower and it's, it's a good laugh. And when are you off to Hawaii then to compete in the air marathon? I think possibly when I got enough cash up. Uh, when I'm 150 or something. 150. Like <laughs> did, did your alarm not go off this morning before the race then? Was that well, actually, I just stepped out for a paper See. and I get caught up in the rush. Uh -huh. And the people in Glasgow are really good. They they keep you going. Yes, yeah, good afternoon, Santa. Have you not come a wee bit early this year? No, I'm just getting a bit of practice. And you know, the last year running at home, the wife said, you know, it's a wee bit under the weather. So I decided to start a wee bit early this year and Aye. do all the marathons throughout the world, you know, ready for the, the big rooftop swing Christmas Eve. Uh, are you feeling tired after the race? Oh, so, so. You know, in the middle, the middle, it sort of caught up with me, but the encouragement for the crowd was tremendous. You know, it's, it was as if they all recognised me. I don't know what it was. 
I just wonder if you were slayed after it, you know. Or... Uh, no, not really. I could no. a few words for it, but I don't think slayed. And you haven't even got a red nose either, so Rudolph Blue nose, about blue that. nose. Blue nose, right? <laughs> oh, we won't ask you any further questions then, Sandra. Yeah, right. We we'll look forward to seeing you again in uh, December. Yeah, and, no bother. Uh, what is your name again? Our name is Flashback Video. Flashback, that's right. You wanted the bicycle, what was it, the toy soldier. I remember it well. Thank you very much I'll indeed, Santa. You. Thank you, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> 26 miles, 385 yards on from the Tron Gate, the sense of achievement upon crossing the finish line is something which has to be experienced to be believed. And for some runners in particular, this will be a day they will always remember. These are the people, the marathon runners, who experience two extreme feelings together.